Hello again, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani here on this Wednesday, being joined by the one and only Platinum Mike Perry, who returns to action on Saturday night at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas. He's going up against Mickey Gall in the co-main event of the card headline, of course, by Dustin Poirier versus Dan Hooker. We haven't talked to Mike in a while, so it's great to have him here today. Mike, first off, how are you? Thank you for doing this. Yeah, uh, thanks for the platform to get to talk to these haters and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's not really like you can be a fan and a viewer that wants to watch to see me win. You know what I mean? And I appreciate it if you want those things. But there's literally nothing that I gain from you wanting me to win. You're not doing anything for me. I don't need you screaming on the sidelines. I don't need you um sticking up for me on social media, you know, and it's it's going to be me against my opponent in there. I'm going to go in, I'm going to fight my fight the way I want, the way I trained for it myself. It's platinum martial arts. It's always been platinum martial arts. I am the co-creator, the co-creator. What does that mean? I'm the mother, I'm the main creator of this. I guess co, my dad and mom made me and that's that's from the day one, bro. It's destiny. I'm 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 here now, and I'm here to take what's mine. And it don't matter, bro. I don't really need to say nothing else. To the haters, bro. That's all I got to say about that. Shit. What's going on? I mean, you're you're coming out really hot here, Mike. Are a lot of people hating on you right now? What are you feeling? What's going on? I'm good, bro. They can't touch me. I wish I wish one of these would try to touch me. All the shit that they talk, it's like they they should walk around with a toilet under their mouth because it falls from out of their mouth, bro. Like, but they never say this to me in person. I swear, I feel like some people be whispering shit too, though. They'll whisper some. Oh, oh my god, bro! <laughs> I'm about to make this money. I'm about to beat the out of this little white boy from New Jersey, man. And I'm about to get paid and I'm living my life. I'm gonna go drink some Mai Tais and do some Mai Tai and some, you know, and eat. I'm hungry as uh, yet, yet last week you posted a video, I believe it was on Thursday or Friday, where it appeared as though your knuckles were all cut up and you were banged up and people were worried that you were gonna be out of this fight. Could you tell us the story behind this video? I just uh I beat up these two bouncers, man, and this in this uh that was a long time ago though, obviously. I'm not all ah I'm not all cut up. Okay. So it was just old. I was trolling people. It was a later gram. A later gram. I haven't heard that. I was trolling. Okay, fair enough. So you're all good. No go what what did happen though? Could you tell me the story that led to those cuts? Um, some of them are from training, hitting the bag with bare knuckles, and um, the <laughs> okay. So look, right? Uh, I was taking a piss in the in the bathroom at this club, and the security guard. There's like one by the by like the entrance to the bathroom and after the entrance to the bathroom, there's like a hallway. And so he's at like, he's on the end of the hallway at the entrance. And then there's another one like right behind him in the bathroom. And I was, I was pretty drunk. And I said, I was taking a pee. And I was like, <laughs> yo, how much do they pay y'all an hour to stand there and watch me pee? Cause they were like mad at me as soon as I came in there as I was in there peeing. I was like, it's the bathroom. It's not my fault you work in here. So I was like, how much do they pay you for you to sit here and watch me pee? And they was so mad cause I just kept laughing. So I finished and then I don't even think I was gonna try to wash my hands cause he was in the way, you know. Uh, 
Sorry, that's probably that's not how Corona spreads, anyways. My junk is clean, bro. Anyways, uh, you know, I didn't directly pee on my hands, so it. I went to walk out through this hallway, and there was, <laughs> it was a tight hallway, and they were both standing in it, getting ready for me to like be close enough for them to be like, oh, he touched us, you know what I mean? They were security, and I was like, y'all, big mad. So I went to walk through laughing. I had my head up. And <laughs> and the dudes, like, they kind of, like, puffed their chest out in, in that hallway so that when I went to walk through them, they, could, they tried to stop me. I was like, y'all have a good night or something. And I went to walk through, and they, like, pushed up against me. And I, when they tried to squish me, I, I pushed one up and I hit him with my face. And then I turned around and I hit the other one with my left hand. Oh my God. And then I went to hit him again and he moved and I punched a wall. And then he kind of just went back into the bathroom and I left. Whoa. When was that? This was like six months ago. Oh, wow. Okay. And did anything else happen as a result of that or just kind of ended? No, I, we left. I left the club, bro. I just got out of there. <laughs> okay. Damn, that's crazy. Um, well, I'm glad you're okay. Uh, so that there's so there's two big questions surrounding you going into this fight. There's your hand and the cuts and all that. So I'm glad we cleared that up. You're good to go. The other one is, uh, is it true that you are only going to have one corner person for this fight, and that is your girlfriend? Yes, sir. Just one. No one yeah. else. No one else. Why? Cause she's perfect. Does she have experience in terms of martial arts training or cornering people? Uh, cornering? No, but no, she's just a tough little peanut butter cup, chocolate chip cookie. And she has experience in boxing and wrestling. She wrestled throughout high school, believe it or not. Um, and she's going to do the number one thing that I could ask of a coach is just sit there and enjoy the show because you got the best seat in the house and I don't need your advice anyways. I've done the work. It's done. I've seen the fight in my head a thousand times and I'm going to hit this dude in the face and I'm going to bust his chops, bro. That's it. Did you train with a team or any coaches for this fight or did you just train on your own? Um, I did. I went to some gyms. I got some jujitsu in with uh, this one gym. You know, I try. I'm. I like to go around and yeah, uh, give my time to the martial arts community. And I'm I'm good to have in your gym. I'm a good training partner. If I can come in and get some work with the bodies and people from all over the world, from all types of gyms, uh, they they show me respect and uh, you know they're grateful for me coming out. I take pictures with fans and also other uh, up and coming mixed martial artists um, going to some gyms, ran into other UFC fighters, get some work, give them some tips. Um, and I'm not going to sit there and let their coaches tell me do this or don't do this or like, no, and we'll, we can work positional stuff and I'm going to show you where it's, where it's going to go and what's going to happen. And then we can work, on things um, from there, I feel like the UFC is calling me. They're trying to get in touch with me like I did something wrong. And oh. Yeah, they keep trying to get a hold of me. But, you know, she's just going to sit there quietly, and then she's going to cheer when I win. Uh, how did you guys come to this decision? Was this something that you decided early on, or you just kind of felt like it was right recently? Um. No, I knew what I wanted to do a while back. And um, it's been me and my girl, uh, just us doing our own thing, taking care of life, handling business out here. And um, we're a great team. I handle my part. She handles hers. And that's just sit there and look beautiful, you know what I mean? And... and uh, help daddy feel like you know a champion inside and i do so 
I'm gonna handle business, bro. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Could I ask? And and I totally understand if you don't want to answer this, but because it was so public, you know, when you got married recently, now obviously you're no longer married. What happened? Oh, it uh, just wasn't meant to be, bro. This is this is meant to be. Uh, you're happy. Absolutely. It's I'm living my dreams, bro. And it, it's taken a while to get here. And, you know, what can I say? Uh, they need to relax. Calling me three damn times. Would y'all relax? I'm do. I'm having a conversation here. I'm going to be out there in a second. I'll call you right back. I saw the first one. Anyways, this, bro, there's nothing else I want in life. What else do you want to be a fighter for? I want to be a fighter for the baddest little chick that I could get ever. And I got her. And now I get to show her. Like, come on, watch this, honey. Watch this. Check this out. I'm going to bust this boy's chops. And we're going to cut the check. And we're going to have a, a little celebration and pop bottles, and we're going to get on the boat, and we're going to drink my ties. And we're going to throw money at the, in the air for no reason, because we can. That sounds like a great I got to call the UFC back, Ariel. You're going to get me in trouble with ESPN and the UFC. No. You got more questions? You're asking some personal stuff now. No, no, okay. Well, can I just ask you, I mean, um, it didn't seem, when you got the Mickey Golf fight, you were like, man, I've been fighting top contenders I'm happy they gave me this guy. So you feel like this is relative to the recent fights that you've had. This is a, a, a favorable matchup for you. Would it be fair to say that? And if so, why? It's just how I'm going to treat it, man. The great Kobe Bryant said, as soon as you think about competing, you've already lost. There's no competition for me. I am the greatest fighter on the planet Earth. And I just need to remember that when I walk up in there. No crowd yelling belligerent things, no distractions like that. I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to flow. And it's going to be beautiful. There's going to be blood all over the canvas and it's going to be painted pretty red. And my, I'm going to do a, a bloody snow angel in the middle of the ring and tell you all to bow down to the queen. Uh, do you like the idea of fighting? Uh, do we do we still, could we have like five more minutes? Is that possible, or do you do you want to wrap this up? Yeah, no, it's five minutes is good. Okay. Um, do you like the idea of fighting in an empty arena? Have you ever done that before? Um, I mean, yeah, when I go train, right? Right, right, of course. It's but I mean, like, be like training. Right. I've gone in some big buildings that were empty, and yeah, and I've when I think my first, you know, your first pro fights or your first amateur fights, or they got some. You know, we just fought wherever, bro. We did whatever. I had people come to my house and we would fight on a tarp in the backyard. There'd be three, four of us back there. There's less people than that uh, where it's going to be there on Saturday. And those are the people who are going to be most excited watching. They're going to be looking. You know, they watch all the time. So these are the people I want to fight for. I said they got the... Uh, they got the billionaire room at the UFC PI, man. They got the little stands in there and you get in the cage and then the glass opens up and they can see the fight. Like, come on, let's go. Let's set up some big uh, money undergrounds. <laughs> yes. Uh, would it be fair to say if all goes well on Saturday, uh, regardless of what happens in his fight next month, that, that you want Darren Till next? Are we going to get some sort of conclusion to this feud? Cause it seems like it all of a sudden has ramped up after it seemed like you guys were friends and now you're not friends. W would that be a fair statement? I've never been his friend. I don't know him. He don't know me. The whole world and the internet want to act like they know somebody, but they don't have no idea who they talking about until they walk up on them. I ain't, I ain't taking no pictures with you bums. I don't trust none of y'all. Y'all can stay away from me. Keep my name out of your mouth. If you call my name out, you can go f yourself. I don't want no fans. I don't want no friends. It's just me by myself. And I'm my girl got my back. So, and she ain't got to do nothing. She ain't going to have to lift a finger. It's all me. It's always been all me. The rest. I'm out this. Thank you, Mike.
Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.